looks like I'm in for another busy travel year, so let's start planning. From getting the most of my credit card benefits to smart travel redemptions, lounge access, and earning tons of points, this video will cover it all. Cause I'm walking through my entire year's worth of travel with every decision and thought making sure I'm maximizing the benefits available or that I'm earning the most value from my spend. Now, before we dive into the details, it's important to note that all of the tips and strategies in this video can be applied by anyone, regardless of how you optimize your credit card points and rewards. Because on one hand, there are those who aim to spend as little as possible on their travel, being happy with one to 1.5 cents per point. On the other hand are those who only chase the dreams of ultra luxurious trips like the Maldives or those five to 10 cents per point hard to get redemptions. As for me, I fall somewhere in between leaning towards the side of max value. I don't hold out for those once in a lifetime redemptions. I'm fine with at least two cents per point on average, even though it usually settles between three to five cents per point. My main goal is to enjoy these elevated travel experiences for myself and my close ones. For example, with my five week Asia trip last year, it was for a group of four people, including my parents, traveling entirely in business class, burning almost 700,000 points over that time. And then this year, most of the trips are in groups as well. And so now that you have a better idea on how I optimize my credit card points and benefits, let's dive into the first part of an upcoming Asia trip with a flight from Vancouver to Osaka. There's a few strategies I need to think through here. One is how I book the flight in the first place, two, my accommodation, and three, airport lounges. Let's start with one. So after traveling so much last year, it made me realize just how much I enjoy travel. And so it's been on my mind this year to fit in some sort of trip in the first half of the year. He's just always been a top choice of mine, so I keep an eye out for redemptions between a couple home airports and major Asian cities. One day, I found a business class flight from Vancouver to Osaka for only 55,000 aeroplan points, plus about $40 in fees. That's as low as it gets because when we look at the redemption chart, even though Air Canada's points fluctuate, this is at the bottom of the range. It's also great to know that the distance between Seattle, Vancouver to Japan is right under the threshold for the next tier of points. What's more is that there were eight seats available, which is really rare for such a good redemption. Now I know Air Canada is not the most desirable airline, especially compared to the likes of ANA or JAL, but with these redemptions available during our time we wanted to travel and enough to book for a small group, I was sold. So in the end, we took four seats on this flight, which each could have costed $2,000. So taking the round trip flight divided by two, pinning the redemption at $2,000 divided by 55,000 points, giving us a value of 3.63 cents per point. For so many seats on a decent product, for a time that fits all of our schedules, it was perfect. Lesson here is to find out where you wanna travel, when you can travel, and then set up alerts or search from time to time these routes to see what's available and be ready to book at an instant. Next, my accommodation. Nothing too special here given we're traveling as a group, so we're looking more towards these apartment hotels, and in this case, the Mamaru chain of hotels. They're modern, clean, and in great locations, and cost less than two separate hotel rooms, because in Japan, most of these hotels only cater to two people, and it's less than the cost of Airbnbs when you factor in the quality and all the fees. I didn't book it myself, but if I were to, I would use the card that gives me elevated points in this category. I don't have a chase card that gives me three times on travel. This one only gives me two times. My Amex Platinum cards have pretty poor multipliers. My Venture X will give me two times points on the general spend category. So in this case, I would have to settle with a three times on travel through my Amex green card. Then lounges. Given I'm flying through YVR, I'll have the choice of the Maple Leaf lounges, given we're flying business class, or a lounge through one of my credit cards. Checking through the app, that means it's either the temporary location for the Plaza Premium or the Sky Team Lounge that does have a nice made to order noodle bar and a wine area. Given I've been to the Sky Team Lounge and because we're flying business class, we'll likely choose the Maple Leaf Lounge. All right, now in Japan, there's gonna be a lot of eating and walking, but mainly eating. So how do we capitalize on all of that food spend? Despite more and more places taking card, having cash on hand is still essential in Japan. For this, I rely on my Schwab debit card, which is what I have for all of my international trips. Given I can take out cash at any ATMs, 
and have those fees reimbursed. So before any major trip, I'll load up a few thousand dollars in the account so I can take it up pretty much anywhere at any place. For the spend that can be put on cards, I focus on two things. One, that there's a high multiplier for this dining category, and two, that they do not charge a foreign transaction fee. At three times per point for dining, that narrows it down to my Chase Sapphire Preferred or my Amex Green Card. But because I value Chase points just slightly more, and Visa is more accepted than American Express, the Sapphire Preferred will likely be my dining card of choice. Lesson here, know which cards to use on common categories like dining beforehand, and make sure they're loaded onto your mobile wallet or that you have the card with you at all times. Then after stuffing our face with sushi, ramen, and my favorite melon pan, the next leg of the trip takes us to Seoul, South Korea. Because this is such a short flight, cash is most likely the play here. With flights going as low as $80 among the low-cost carriers, and major airlines like Asia Asiana and Korean Air costing not too much more, with better customer service and earlier times to drop off your luggage. And at $150 each for Asiana, it's a perfect way to use my $300 credit on my Capital One Venture X card, given when checking the portal it's pretty much the same cost. Alternatively, I could use some of my leftover United points to book these flights for 8 to 9,000 points each, which isn't the best redemption but I don't have better use for my United points. If I was going for the route of minimizing the dollars I spent on this trip, then this would probably be the route to go. That said, I am leading towards my Venture X credit unless I want to test out the business class product on Korean Air. Especially given Virgin Atlantic's transfer bonus of 30%, that brings the redemption down from 15,000 points to 11,600, which at two cents per point is $232 plus the fees giving us 262, which is lower than the cash value, but it's also less than two hours of a flight. So let me know if you would choose that. As for lounges, the airport has three Plaza Premium and one Priority Pass lounge, which can be accessed through my Venture X or my Amex Platinum card. While none of these have great ratings when scrolling through images or Google reviews, I'll reserve judgment until I see them in person. All right, now a short two hours later, we land in Seoul. So where are we staying? Well, the first thing that comes to mind when thinking about hotels is, are there any unused credits I still have? In this case, the $200 hotel credit on my Amex Platinum card for use towards FHR or the hotel collection. Going through the search, there are quite a few options, some with special offers, but the Conrad Soul stands out as somewhat good value, especially with a third night free perk. Another thought is, can I use these nights towards any hotel status challenges? More specifically, the Hyatt Corporate Challenge that allows me to achieve globalist status if I stay for 20 nights within 90 days. I do have quite a lot of travel, and this duration will give me about four to five nights. Additionally, my employer has a code that gives me a lower rate at specific Hyatt properties, anywhere from 30 to 40%, including the higher end ones like the Park Hyatt. On top of that, I have a very generous friend who is willing to part ways with a guest of honors award, giving me pretty much globalist status during my stay as well. I'm still weighing the options here, but this is what's on the table. One, booking through FHR and triggering the $200 credit, as well as benefiting from all the other FHR benefits. Two, getting the reduced rate, guest of honors, and having these nights countered towards the challenge. Or three, a combination between the two. What would you do? But the lesson here is to not forget your credits across any of your cards and to see if you're eligible for any of these challenges. Then with the soul adventure coming to an end, how do we get home? Well, one of two ways. First, pay cash. Currently a one-way flight costs as low as about $700, which is not too bad given the comparable points redemptions would need to be lower than option two, which is paying with points. In this case, costing 35,000 points at the lowest when bucking through Aeroplan. However, it could be a better consideration if I want to fly Korean Air booked through Virgin, especially with this 30% bonus. That brings the redemption down from 31,000 points to just 24,000 points. At two cents per point, 
that's like only $480 in cost. If I want to fly business class, however, I would need to wait because the redemptions right now are just not appealing. So I either have to one, lock in the price with cash and call it a day, while still earning five times points if I'm booking through portals, two, book economy with virgin points for a good value, and three, continue scouting out for any better redemptions, maybe first locking in an economy redemption, and then later changing it to a business class ticket if it comes available. Which is a good overall lesson, where you can lock in a points redemption for economy first, then pay $50 or $100 in most cases to change to a better flight if it comes up. That guarantees you won't be paying those higher and higher prices if you wait longer and longer. As for lounges, if we snag business class tickets, then those are the lounges we'll go to. Otherwise, I'll choose from one of the nine lounges at the airport or even lounge hop if we're up for it. That concludes the Asia trip, but there's so much more because soon after, I'll be going on a work trip over to New York City, which comes with a bunch of other benefits we could use, such as who I'll be flying with, Given it's SeaTac, it'll either be Alaska or Delta, both of which I can use the $200 airline fee credit from my Amex Platinum card, depending on which airline you choose. With a five to six hour flight each way, it's more than worth it to pay about $100 each way to choose seats in the premium section of economy, which isn't an upgrade, so you can get priority boarding and four inches of extra legroom. And if I do choose to fly Delta, I can also check out the Delta Sky Club at SeaTac, given I have access through my Amex Platinum card. If not, I'll just visit the typical Centurion Lounge. On the way back, however, I might want to route through LGA or JFK so I can check out one of the new Chase Sapphire lounges. Even though I don't have a Sapphire reserve, you actually get one access per year if you have Priority Pass, which I do on both my Venture X and my Amex Platinum card. I'll be sure to document my experience because looking at reviews online, they look amazing. As for hotels, this is also where I can consider the Hyatt Challenge given it could add five to six days towards my 20 day count. And because we pay for the hotels first, I'll probably use the three times of travel on my Amex screen again, given I can't really book through external travel portals. All right, we did Asia, we did New York City. Next trip in line for the year is Toronto and Montreal. For a full breakdown on how I booked this entire trip, check out the video up above. But essentially, we were able to find premium economy tickets for just 20,000 points which is lower than economy at 24,000 points. So booking premium economy gave us a value of 2.2 cents per point, which is not that high, but usually domestic flights are on the lower end of that scale compared to the more premium international routes. From Toronto to Montreal, likely pay cash given it's an hour and $100. Though if I haven't used the $300 Venture X credit on my Asia trip, this is another good opportunity. On our way back, again, premium economy was cheaper than economy, giving us a value of 2.63 cents per point. For both directions though, I'm still keeping an eye out for any business class tickets that become available. Because you never know when they might swap planes and then suddenly there's so much more award space. For example, on a date that doesn't fit our schedule, there's an amazing redemption for not only economy but business class as well, especially when it's using a wide body with a lie flat business class seat. When it comes to hotel stays, because we're in a bigger group, it may not make as much sense even though it's available to make some of those higher redemptions. That said, this is another week I can add towards the higher challenge, but it'll cut it close. Conservatively, that's four days in Seoul, five in New York City, and then seven for this trip, giving us a total of 16 nights. I'm not sure if it's worth it to do a mattress run of four nights to trigger globalists through 2026. That is purposely staying at cheap Hyatt hotels with the intention of building up those nights. Because the other trip I have in the year falls outside of that 90 day window and it's down to Cancun for a friend's wedding. Because this is a vacation package, I won't be paying for the flights and hotels myself, but I'll be sure to use a card that will give me elevated value for the travel category. It'll really depend on how the agency charges my card, but it'll likely be the three times travel on my Amex screen. For other spend like buying the wedding attire, I'll put it on my Venture X, giving me two times 
on everything else. Now, apart from maximizing the points and benefits I have, another thing to consider is how do I get the most value from all of the spend across all of my trips? And when it comes to sizable spend, I think of welcome bonuses, especially welcome bonuses on the higher end cards. But that's where things get tricky because for my original plan, I was planning to get the no annual fee cards like Robin Hood Gold or the Built Master card. But those cards may not be the best used for all of the spend. And so I want to look at those higher end cards with higher bonuses to make sure I'm not wasting all of the spend. Maybe the US Bank Altitude Reserve card for its elevated multipliers for mobile wallets, or hotel cards like the Hilton Aspire or Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant for all of those sweet hotel perks. Which might not be a bad idea to have those higher hotel statuses for trips throughout the year. Though I don't have immediate plans for those free night awards, and I really don't want to have those go to waste. Anyways, that's my entire year's worth of travel planned out, with strategies to maximize credits across several credit cards, maximizing lounge access, and tips and tricks on searching for and redeeming points for maximum value. Even with this year alone, I'm estimating the value I'm getting from all these redemptions to be upwards of $10,000 across all the people. So you can start to see why premium cards are so valuable. And to make sure you're not missing out as well, check out this video for why you need these cards. See you over there.